there, Amanda from the Social Studio here again this week for our weekly warble. Hope you had a fabulous week. So this week I thought we would explore the world of Jersey and do a little bit of sew along if you fancy joining me as well. I have chosen the Grace Top from the Friday Pattern Company. It just so happens that it's on my make for June as well. Um, and I just thought, yeah, it might be quite interesting uh, for you, hopefully, um, to share a little bit, some little tips and hints when you are sewing with Jersey. Now, it's a really lovely, easy top to make. So it's super good for beginners, or even if you are slightly more experienced, hopefully you'll pick up some tips along the way. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the sizing to start with. The sizing goes from extra small to double XL, which is basically a 32 to 33 bust as the small size going up to a 44 to 46. I've chosen the large because it's 38 to 39 and I generally tend to go on my high bust measurement. The finished garment measurement is allowing about an inch in the bust area, which is quite unusual for a jersey. Um, so we may need to sort of trim down a little bit. Normally you'd like it a little bit more fitted around the bust, but we'll actually sort of see how it goes along the way. It's got a little high, low, high, low rised hemline on the back and it's sleeveless and it's also got a slight racer back on the sleeve openings. Okay, so let's have a little look at the fabric I'm going to use. The fabric I'm using today is a lovely organic jersey knit and if you remember what I said at the beginning it was that it should have at least a 20% stretch. So if you're not familiar with how to find out the stretch percentage you take a four inch okay 10 centimeters piece of fabric and you can then stretch accordingly if you go an extra inch that's going to be 25 percent if you can go a full two inches that's 50 percent four inches would be the full hundred so with this piece I'll get a new piece. We'll take the four inches so it comfortably stretches to 25% stretch on there. It will go further but we don't really want our fabric stretched that tightly. So I would say it's comfortable 25 to 30% so we're absolutely fine. The more stretch in a fabric then the finished garment measurement will actually become or the finished look will actually become a little bit bigger. So just bear that in mind and if you've got less then you may need to go up a size to compensate if you need a little bit more stretch um, in the garment without your fabric. So when I've laid out my fabric. I have folded in one side of the salvage and then I've folded in the other so I've actually then got my two pieces that I can cut on the fold. I've then made sure that the grain is nice and even so I've actually picked up a repeat pattern through and made sure that the fold is then taken on each little flower that I've depicted out. If we had a directional print, so we wanted the, the print going in the same direction and we need our pattern piece going in the same direction, it's absolutely fine for you to turn the pattern piece over so that you've got the top and the bottom in the same area. For this one, it is a randomised, non-directional, so I'm quite happy to actually then place the back piece going running in the opposite direction. So for this video purpose, I can then actually sort of see everything on the pattern. We've got notches that we've got on by the front and the back, and we've got a shorten and lengthen line. So dependent, if you needed to shorten it or wanted to shorten it, if you wanted an inch, you would draw a line an inch above and then fold that line up accordingly. You'll have a little jut out so you would blend that through to your bottom corner 
again the armholes are a little bit lower on this one so again if you wanted to you could actually just pinch out say a little quarter inch through there just to make the actual armhole not too low and again we would just blend that through and that's what I'm going to do on my piece I'm just going to shorten the armhole just fractionally by a quarter of an inch to take a little bit out of it so I'm going to pin on and then get ready to cut out I'm all pinned out then and I thought well it is a weekly warble so I'm going to warble at you while I cut it out so when you're cutting try and keep the bottom blade of your scissors on the actual desk and you'll have a lot more control we're just going to take through and put in alongside our pattern piece if you can hear a little bit of background noise i apologize but it's so warm in the studio at the moment seems UK is still going through quite a little bit of a heat wave for June. So I've got the fans going just to keep the temperature down a little bit, especially with the studio lights as well. Okay, so I will take that through because my angle will be a lot easier when I twist this around. there is my front cut out and then for the notch some people will take the little diamond out I tend to just literally lift the paper up and just give myself a little quarter inch six millimeter nick into the fabric as a mark point so we're going to fold that to one side and continue to cut the back piece out. Both front and back pieces are now cut out with our halfway notches. So we're going to open up the one side and then we're going to place, it doesn't matter if you've got the front facing up or the back, and we're going to place the other one face down. We're going to match our underarm and so if you're new to jersey a cotton knit is a good one to start with you will get a little bit of rolling on the edge but as long as you use plenty of pins you will be absolutely fine then match down our bottom seam We'll do the same on the other side and then we're going to also match these V cut out pieces. This is the facing that then gets pulled down to the inside once we actually stitch together. If you wish to you can overlock this raw edge or you can pink and shear it if you want to but with the cotton knit it's not going to um, fray anything like that so it is fine if you wish to you can leave it that way machine prep then i'm threaded up i've got a jersey needle in i've got an S, uh, size 80 12 needle that is because it's a fairly standard weight jersey cotton knit if it was finer then i'd go down to a 70 10 and if it was quite a heavy more like a pontaroma i could go up to a 90 14. so you get jersey needles and you get stretch needles both are going to help you from getting skip stitches we don't want to skip stitches when we are sewing the stretch needle generally tends to be more for densely woven jerseys, maybe um, very high lycra contents, things like um, neoprenes and sort of scubas, swim, elastic, uh, swim wear type of things, anything like that. But for your normal um, cotton knits and ponty romas, then your jersey is going to be great. 
and that is because on both of them you've got a more rounded ballpoint end which is going to push through the fibres and it won't rip them at all hence then we won't get any skip stitches now you can on your machine work with a stretch stitch so a stretch stitch is going to look a little bit like the lightning bolt number six now if you do use this on if your machine's got it i'm not always a real fan of the um lightning bolt only because one if you do have to unpick it is really hard to unpick and occasionally it can actually make your fabric warp just a little bit now if we use a straight stitch with the stretch of the fabric we are in danger of our stitches popping so if you don't wish to use your stretch knit then i would recommend a zigzag stitch and I would put it at a stitch width of around about two or one and a half and a stitch length at one and a half. Give it a go, always trial your stitches, see what you think, what you like the best and go with that. Now the seam allowance is our five eighths, one and a half centimeters. So we will be then, let's just move the machine out. So we will be going down the sides and then through that neck area now again if you're a little bit unsure and you wish to then I would recommend that you just baste it together quickly try it on see if you need to make any adjustments whether you need to use your seam allowance and come out a little bit if you want a little bit more room or whether you need to take it in a little bit um, for a slightly closer fit. Sides and neck sewn together. I have overlocked down the sides of mine but if you haven't got an overlocker don't worry about it. Like I say you can either put do pink and shears or just literally press them open. So on the neck edge where you've got that V you need to snip up through to your stitching okay so you're going to the stitch line just not through it and that will then help your neckline to sit nice and flat so we will now open these out on both sides you can give these a little press and these then simply get folded down together so that the casing the neck facing should I say is then to the inside it's gonna sit really lovely so it gives us that little funnel neck which is dead cute let's open those out So I decided on my neck line, I did baste it together, just tried it on. I didn't want it quite as tight, so I just came into half an inch seam allowance, about 12 millimeters. There we go. And then you can then stitch through the seam line, just towards the bottom to anchor that down. And that then will stay nice and flush and won't keep flipping up when you have when you're wearing it so that's our little top to put together our main top and what we have left to do is to finish up our armholes and then to actually hem the bottom The last thing to do then is we're going to finish off our armholes and our hem. The pattern is asking us to turn half an inch under on both and finish off. And I've got two products that I think will make it a little bit quicker, easier and really neat. So the first one for the armholes is this Visaline 
form band. It's a piece of interfacing that has been cut on the bias so it goes around curves super easy. So with this racer back style it's really going to take and hug that shape. The last thing we want to do is turning things under and stretching them out. So this binding also has a row of stay stitch built into it which is going to stop anything from stretching out. It's fusible as I say and the stay stitch is just off centre and what we want to do is put this wider area against the raw edge of our top, fuse it into place and then you will find that it will fold under really neat and easy and that stay stitch is then going to hold into place super fine. For the hem rather than putting the form band in it's another visaline product it is seam band okay so seam binding again it is a interfacing which is fusible but it is a jersey interface it's a stretch interfacing and it's very similar to the 609 that you can buy in the roll and obviously you could then cut it into strips but this is already formed in 15 millimeter five eighths amounts and again we can fuse this onto the inside of our garment along at the edge raw edge and we can then flip that up as I say the pattern says half an inch and we're not going to fall out by one eighth of an inch or three millimeters and that way we can as I say fold up it's going to stabilize the garment on both the arms and on the hem so if you're twin needling and you have ever have problems with like tunneling through this will eliminate um, or really help to eliminate any of that tunneling of twin needling you can if you want to if you have a cover stitch if you're easy lucky enough to have a cover stitch you can then cover stitch that through or if you have never used a twin needle or have a cover stitch then I would recommend that you finish off with a little zigzag um, stitch or you can quite happily do a straight stitch on the hem and on the arms as you won't be getting any major stretch areas so they won't pop if they're then in place. So I'll get these done and we'll have a little look afterwards. And we're all done. So I went round my arm holes and the um, hem with the cover stitch. As I say, you could quite easily use a twin needle. You could quite easily do a little zigzag or quite happily, confidently to do a straight stitch if you wanted to because they're not going to pop with them being a hemline and there isn't excess stretch around the arm holes either. Um, and especially with that seam binding and form binding around the arms then you've got extra strength and stability to stop any puckering and any tunnelling if you use. There we go, that's our grace top all finished. Excuse the skirt, it was all that we had in the studio, it doesn't really go but it'll be fine, um, obviously because I was wearing a dress beforehand really pleased with the neckline super cute um, and the cutaway sleeves they're sitting really nicely and like the high low rise hem and yeah it's nice and relaxed through the waist so with a pair of shorts or skinny jeans anything like that um, but equally it could be tucked in quite nicely into a skirt so there we go so I do hope you've really enjoyed this little tutorial and picked up some hints and tips on the way um, I'll put all the links below of the seam binding and things like that anything that I used and don't forget to give us a thumbs up guys if you found it useful and subscribe if you've not already so have a lovely week and I'll see you very soon for another bit of warbling bye now